Size of space and guidelines, maps of connectivity, larval dispersal, minimum size versus preferred size, habitat representation, replication, and the spillover effect. The spillover effect is a theory that in the reserve, it will literally reach maximum load of the fish. The fish in there will be so well managed, there'll be so many of them, they'll repopulate completely 100%, and they'll actually be falling out of the reserve. Like, an overflowing bucket of fish. That is the spillover effect. Okay, next slide. Size and spacing. The way this basically works is, if you have an animal that doesn't move, you don't need a big reserve to capture. If you have a mussel or a scallop or something, zero to one kilometer of reserve area, because abalone's mussels, they don't move. Okay? Invertebrates, like jumbo squid, sardine, shark, tunas, they have a range of a thousand kilometers and more. They just come and go. So you can't make a reserve big enough to protect anything here. You can't really make a reserve big enough to protect the vast majority of seabirds because they actually just fly wherever they want to feed. The only protection you can do is their nesting areas. That's not in the water though, that's on land. So it's a little bit different. Um, fish in the middle is, is where we're stuck working. Fish on the bottom, a lot of your rock fishes, okay? And then the fish in the middle. Uh, China rockfish, green spotted olives, uh, perch, surf perches, uh, some of the invertebrates that you could still have a reserve that might protect is Dungeness crabs and lobster. Um, then you get into your other fish, fish that reserves have a good chance of protecting. Uh, halibut, lingcod, calico bass, things of that nature, okay? These, these guys, they don't get that far, but this, this tends to be the range that the reserves are working on. 10 square miles. The minimum, nine square miles, basically. Next slide. Okay, size guidelines developed by the SAT, the Science Advisory Team. An area large enough to capture the habitat for the entire life cycle of sea life most likely to benefit from an MPA. Yellowtail don't benefit from MPAs because they leave. When the current changes, whatever happens, they're gone, okay? Abalone benefit from MPAs. The bigger the reserve, the more potential species can be covered. Two, size, two reserve sizes were considered. The minimum size guidelines are three statute miles along shore by three nautical miles to the edge of state water. We call these the nine square mile. That's the minimum. The preferred size, which they would like to see, is 18 square miles. This is six miles along shore by three nautical miles out to the edge of state waters. It's pretty big for those of you who recognize exactly how far walking down the beach six miles is. Preferred size MPAs give maximum points for habitat covered, and the minimum size MPAs give acceptable points for habitat covered. The Blue Ribbon Task Force has said time and again they would like to see preferred size MPAs, but it does not necessarily mean a large MPA would score more points. This is all because of the type of habitat you capture. Captured habitat is king there. There are no extra points for reserves over 18 square miles. It only gets credit for preferred guidelines. You close the whole coast, it wouldn't matter. You only get the, the habitat protected in the reserve, okay? An example, having a 15 square mile reserve does not get any extra credit for being over nine square miles. And a 23 square mile reserve will get no more points, as it were, than an 18 square mile reserve. However, habitat requirements may mean an oddball size reserve may be necessary, i.e. a 12 square mile reserve or something similar. And that would still count only towards the minimum. Because if you had a nine square mile reserve, which is three along short, and you did not get that 1.14 miles of kelp they want us to grab, you might have to boost that reserve to four miles to get it. You might have to go to five miles along short. You're talking about points in the negotiations? No, this is what the scientists want to see because there are, in the next slide, you'll see the captured habitat. You'll see the habitats that we have to capture. 